Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We've got another Kevin and Zach live stream. Glad everyone joined us today. Um, last week, we had a lot of fun trying to find some magic numbers. And this week, we are going to continue with the theme of solving problems from the Rosetta Code website, uh, except with one little change. We found that we're down to about 180 unsolved problems in Mathematica, which seems like a lot, but we started with almost double that. So within a matter of about a month or so, you guys have solved half of the existing unsolved problems, which is really fantastic. Um, there's been a lot of fun that's been had by all of us. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to try to start with one of the problems that we looked at a little bit before the stream but we decided that it looked like a topic that we hadn't really done yet. Um, and this is to kind of create a game. So we're gonna be trying to create something called Penny's Game and we'll see how that goes. Very excited. I didn't have much to say there, but I am excited. And thank you, Steam Black. We really appreciate that you learned a lot because we're also learning a lot. That's great. Yeah, but yeah. We can hop right in. let's do it. All righty, gonna share my screen. And so the problem is called Penny's Game. Um, you might think that it's related to flipping pennies without the E, but it turns out it's actually named after someone with the last name Penny. Kind of crazy. But you can't so, flip pennies to play the game. Yeah, it, it, it is a game where two players bet on uh, heads or tails in fair coin tosses. So you can think of it either way, I think. All right, so what we've got going on here is kind of a betting game on the result of flipping a penny. Or, or a coin, we'll just say a coin. <laughs> um, we're gonna but flip. But it's a fair coin, which is it's important fair. to know. So just, yeah. that means their odds are, you know, as near to one half as we can for either side. Yeah, you're equally likely to get heads as you are to get tails. So um, there, we're gonna flip a penny as many times as we can until we get a three penny sequence that we bet on beforehand. So say I bet that heads tail heads is gonna show up first. Zach bets that maybe heads 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 is gonna show up first. Uh, or actually let's use the example I have right here. So say that I was betting on heads heads tails and Zach was betting on tails head tails. If we start flipping the coins and we get heads, tails, tails, none of ours have come up yet. Then a heads, still none of them. Then we flip a tails. Oh, look, the last three were Zach's combination. So he won the bet. Um, cool. In the game, we're actually running, a, we're, we're playing against a computer. So it's, it's human versus computer. And there's a few different requirements for the task. So the person who chooses the sequence should be random. So either the computer will choose first or we will choose first. If the computer goes first, it chooses its sequence randomly. If the human chooses first, then the computer plays an optimum sequence based off of what I chose. Uh, so this is kind of getting into some sort of game theory. We're not super sure how this works, but we can tell the computer how it works, basically. <laughs> so it, It's a relatively simple rule, but... Mm -hmm you're just counting, you're using whatever the other player chooses as their, you know, last, yeah, no, their first input to dictate what you would choose for your last input, I think. Is that right. Works. Yeah, it's, it's somewhat like, so if I, as the human, chose heads, heads, heads to be mine, then the computer says, okay, for heads, heads, heads to show up, first heads, heads has to show up. Um, but if that shows up, I want to have already won if tails came up before that. And that gives him a, a much bigger odds of winning. Um, for some of them, it's actually pretty significant. He has a seven to one chance of winning if you put in heads, heads, heads. It's only two this to one is, for some different Yeah, it's ones. interesting because especially looking at this first one, mm -hmm. the only time first player could win before the second player you know, if it was totally like, you know, things were working out for him is in the first go You're right. for there to be three heads, then there has to be a tails in front of those three heads. Unless it was the first three yeah. flips. So yeah. that's why the second player's choice is better in this case, because there's more likely, obviously, I guess their odds are ever in someone else's favor. And, you know, the other person may win, but this is how to maximize your odds in this fair game. If you know what your opponent picked, yeah. 
and the rule, and I guess the hard to fast rule for this is that you choose the opposite of the person's first one, and then you do their first two. Yeah, I got you, you flip this one and move it to the left, yep. kind of somewhat. Yeah, yeah, and we'll figure that out a little bit as we get closer. Um, okay, and it also just wants us to print out the successive coin tosses. That's easy. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to know how to do is flip a coin, all right? And one way that we can do that is choose a random choice between heads and tails, um, where we've represented heads and tails just as the letters H and T. So there, a couple times, I chose a random heads or tails. We can make, say, a list of coin tosses. We got five coin tosses here, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails. Neat. Um, we could also do this another way by flipping a coin once, but inside of a table, generate another list of, of five coin tosses. Okay, cool. So that's a few ways that we can do that. We've done it. Um, so that's basically the whole game. Yeah, yeah that's, that's basically <laughs> the game. Now, the thing that we have to do now is we need to create our sequences. Yeah. So... So we need to be flipping this coin only until we get to the sequence. Yeah, but let's make let's make a random sequence. Let's say you know we're playing with our computer, and so theoretically the second player's choice, we can just say for now that it's two computers against each other. So the computer is going to choose something random out of those three. So we could just make a permutation of three of them, and that could be the first computer's choice. Yeah, like the computer could guess, I think it's going to be, well, we can even just use this example. Um, computer, someone guesses it's going to be heads, heads, tails. Uh, and we're looking for whether that shows up in here, kind of. Um, and one way we can do that, let's say this is the coin tosses. So, okay, good. It actually does show up in there. So we can turn those tosses into like a, a full string by doing string join. And okay, cool. Now we've got one string that says HHTTT. And now it's easier to look for HHT inside of this longer string um, using, let's see, probably string contains Q. Yeah, cool. I was looking for string contains. It turns out it's actually Q. So it's only ever going to return true or false. If you joined us a couple of weeks ago, we actually created our own queue function called smooth integer queue, which is on the Wolfram function repository right now. Uh, and so what the queue functions do is it returns true if something is true and false otherwise. So there's only two options that you can get from it. So for example, um, we're going to look at if this string here contains the computer's guess, which is HHT. And good, it's true. Now it doesn't contain, for example, HTH, right? That's false. Okay, so um, we could randomly generate this like tosses we make, right? Right. By, we could randomly generate just by adding a, a delayed assignment to tosses, right? Uh, yeah, we could keep maybe in some sort of while loop we go through adding a coin flip until until this string contains becomes true right you you keep be good tossing until string contains says oh that's inside of it um so obviously there's going to be some sort of while in what i've just described um but i think that by the nature of how we've set this up it would be best to do like a nest while because we're able to uh, repeatedly apply a function then and that function can just be adding a coin toss, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the way, the, the function that we could have to add a coin toss could be, let's say string join random choice of H and P with what we're adding and we want what we're adding to probably be first there so this is a pure function cool yep that's a pure function that's going to 
uh, add a random choice to something. So if we had heads, tail, heads already, and we applied this function to it, it adds a tail to it. If we then apply it again, this is getting a little bit complicated, but basically what I'm saying is two outputs ago, which was the function applied to one output ago, which was heads, tail, heads, tail, adds a tail this time. OK, cool. Um, so what we want is this function as the first bit there. I'm going to go into the documentation here, see what all we passed in nestless while. So OK. Basically, what we've got going is nestless while applies this function f to expression while this test is true or until it's false. Two different ways to think of it. Mm, OK. OK, neat. Um, so we could apply it to, I think we probably want to start off with just a random choice, right? You, you start with just a single flip. The, and then you would start yes. adding more flips until, until it does contain, we'll just say, for example, HTH. Um, but I think, OK, so this is while. So this does this while that is true. But we want it to do it, uh, let's see, until it's true. So we just say not that. We basically want the opposite of it. OK, cool. So what we got here is we flipped tail, then a head, then a tail again, then a tail, heads, tails, and then we flipped a heads, and that gave us heads, tail, heads. Okay. So I think we basically did it, right? We we at least generated a way to get all that information. Well, we made one. Play the game. We played the game with ourselves. We yep. probably want to introduce another player. Right. So uh, I think we could probably say string contains this string or... If you're also recommended, we could just start with an empty string, too. We don't have to make a random choice to start. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess this would work the same, just with one extra step. If we just had an empty string and we add, okay, at first as a tails, etc. Yeah, and that's it less works. code. And so I like that. That's good. Yeah, heads good up. Call. Now that we've done this and we say, okay, we have either the first player's thing or the second player's option. And then with we can just do a check afterward that says, okay, which which one was it that stopped it? And we just look right. at the last one. Yeah, I think that probably makes sense because you know the thing at the end will probably print out like, oh, person one or computer one. Yeah, and so part of it was we had to we want to show the each successive flip until someone's case comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could we could even like if we wanted to really like show this off, we could have it like print instead of showing this nest while loop, we could have it just print like in a column. Each, yeah, like that. That shows each excessive flip. And then we get the end, we say, all right, player one is the winner because or in this case it's player two is the winner. Yeah. Mm hmm So um why don't we kind of loop back and talk about how we're gonna input these mm, strings. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to start with is probably a module, and this is just so that we can have local variables uh, that we can assign to the input. Um, we know that the player is going to input some value. That value has got to be stored in some variable. It makes sense to have that variable be, variable be local so that every time you run the game, it um, basically the variable comes into existence then when you run the game instead of mm -hmm. being global. So module so now we just define the variables that we're going to use we can always add some more later but would yeah, it so be correct to say that module is similar to maybe how in another coding language like python you introduce a variable locally in the definition of a function instead of in a larger sense yeah i know that for sure like in 
old Java, you'd have different classes, right? Mm -hmm. And a variable in a class isn't going to be accessible to by calling that same variable from another class mm, unless okay. you define it as global I, I think is how it works it's been a while since mm. i've used java yeah it but, makes sense so every every variable that we're defining in this notebook excluding mm -hmm. this ones in the module are global which means yeah. that if we open another notebook we could call these variables again yes and i think this will work but basically what I'm doing here, cool, is I'm saying, show me all of the variables that start with global as their first okay. definition. And I've already defined, up here I defined something computer. So it's that default is that's a global variable. And then later I define something called tosses. Uh, we can see more about those variables using question oh. mark, which is information, I think. Question mark for when you're confused. Yes, yeah, for when you're confused. And it'll tell you, oh, cool, it's a global variable named computer, which has the assignment that it's this string HHT. Um, that's its full name again. Cool, cool, cool. And there's some slight differences. I, I was always super confused. So you've got module. If we scroll down to similar ones, there's something called with. Um, and it seems like they do the same thing, but the difference is actually uh, th there's there's a big difference. I think um, I was using this earlier as with you can actually when you assign them you can access them outside so they're global variables. Yeah, the difference is, is super subtle. Um, it took me a while to get it. So let's let's just say like we'll square a number. This makes sense. And if we did this with module, it would do the exact same thing. Um, now if you but if you called x, you know if you called x. Now. Yeah, X you is would... still undefined globally, I believe. Um, mm. But the main okay. difference, at least the, the main difference that I use in my coding is that I couldn't, for example, say, okay, we'll square X and then we'll reassign it to 15 and try to square it again. So mm. okay. it can't change X because X isn't a say variable it's actually saying every time you see x replace it with 10 and it doesn't make sense to say 10 equals 15. Okay. but in module i could i could do this these are actually local variables so here i squared it didn't print that then i set it to 15 and squared that and actually got 15 squared so that's that's at least one of the biggest differences i found is that within a module you can reassign variables and that's why I wanted to use module for our function, because we'll be reassigning, say, this in variable to whatever the person inputs. And then we'll be assigning the computer variable to something based off of that. Okay. So yeah. we're so if we don't have an assignment, we just they're just variables yeah. that are unassigned that we're using. Okay. Yeah, we're saying here, I want to use some variables, some symbols. And I want them to be local uh, instead of global. Okay. So we're just changing the scope here. Instead right. of the weird with thing where it's a little complicated. Yeah. So we have in, we could, we, we, how about we make it a little, um, a little more verbose and be like player one and player two? Because oh, okay. the computer could be player one or player two, which we'll have True, to, but we'll have to um, figure that one out as time goes on. But for now, we can just assume player two is the computer. Maybe I'll just say P1. Yeah. P2. Just so we know. Just so that we can kind of extrapolate this, expand what we're doing. Yeah. For now, we'll have player one go first, I guess. And then later we can change it so that it's random. Or, or sorry, we'll have the person, the, the person be player one. Then later we'll, we'll look into changing it. Um, the best way I know to get input from person is there's something called input. And if you run that, it'll say enter an expression like there's something, X plus which one. this will give you an expression that like runs. But yeah. if we used we can use input string too, and right. that'll give us specifically a string instead of a, what's it called uh, a func expression. Yeah. Okay. Good point. So this is enter a string here, and that's you're right. Clearly, what we want because we're going to be putting in something like heads tail heads, and we want that to be a string. So that we could, for example, find its characters, do things like that with it. Um, and 
with just input alone, it gives you kind of a symbol. So if you put in A plus B, it would actually be A plus B, not just the string A plus B. Yeah, so we definitely want to use input string. Input string. And the, this might even be too, you know, vague because we could enter, you know, anything and it, it would just break our game. Right. <laughs> True. Which we'll have to we'll have to like navigate this as we kind of figure out what we want to do with this. It seems to me like the problem doesn't require that you check their inputs and that type of stuff. Of course, it would be a better. Well, game. we wouldn't really be playing the game, would we? Right. If we, if we broke it every time. <laughs> yeah. So it's assuming uh, that the the player is actually. We could also use input correct. field. Um, oh, I only I that. have not used input field so. Okay, so input field is a blank editable input field. Oh, uh, so this is where we could, we, we know that this game, and I was reading about this game, there's only eight combinations you can choose from, right? Right. So theoretically, we could just have like a drop down menu, um, if we could make that. That's just like the eight possible options. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you just, those are your eight possible like things you can have. I got to I got to remember how to make a drop down menu cuz I always forget how to do it. Uh-huh. But um yeah, we could for now we'll just we could just have an input string. It's that probably be easier. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, this is uh this is relatively new to me. So put in something like heads tail heads and then you get heads tail heads is this a string though or no it's not it's a symbol um i think for now i'm going to stick with input string and then we'll use that and maybe we can build off of it to see what else we can do yeah well for now we can just we'll get something on paper you know yeah <laughs> we'll get something working I'll, I'll work on that too so go ahead and we'll say enter your guess with h bean heads and t bean Uh, okay, so that's what player one's guess is. And then player two for now, we'll have them be the computer. Um, so the computer makes its guess based off of player one. That's what it, that's what's required here. So if the computer goes second, it automatically plays the optimum sequence. And the optimum sequence is defined as this weird little pseudocode there. Um, I think basically what it says is the opposite of the second character inputted by the person. So if they put in heads as their second, it should be tails. So I, I we could do something like switch, but I think I'm just going to use if since there's only two cases. So if um, we use string take to get the second character. Yeah, I think that makes sense. If the second character is We'll do three heads, then we swap it to tails. Otherwise, we keep it as heads. That's the first one, and then we just join that with, again, we use string take to take from player one's guess, and we're just taking the first and second elements. Okay. Um, I think we set that up. So let's just get this set up to print out and see if, if it's implementing this optimum scenario properly. So maybe if we just print E1 and then print P2. So if we guess the first option up there, which is heads, 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 then, ooh, that's not right. The computer should be guessing tails, heads, heads. So what went wrong? Um, if, take. if the second element is H, oh, maybe try just printing that first and seeing what yeah. it does. So the first, the second element of this is, oh, okay. It's taking two until the end. Uh, okay. I should have read the documentation here. You want to put it in a list? You want to put it in, um, I'm sorry, curly brackets. Yeah, I was going a little too that. fast. So it, with the way I had it, it was taking the first two characters. 
I want it to take exactly the second character. So documented example right there, take the nth, nth character, boom, it's, yeah, so great. Um, and I assume that my string take, yeah, later it was working as intended because I actually had it, there was, um, it's difficult to get that wrong. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Heads, heads, heads. We put in heads, heads, heads. We get out tails, tails, tails. Cool. cool. Yeah, I, I guess we can assume it works. I was thinking of creating a table with all these cases, but heads, tails, heads, good as heads, heads, tails. I think it's pretty safe to bet that we set this up properly. Yep. Okay, cool. So we've got the input. Um, and then we, up here, had built the game somewhat. So we'll get rid of our little test case right there. Or actually, it might be nice to keep that in. We can keep it right now. Yeah, let's let's keep that in. We'll say like um, player one guest P1. Throw a little space in there. And we'll say player two. This is a little bit different from the stuff that we've done in past weeks because it didn't really matter how it looked, right? Because now we're making a game before we're just trying to solve like a problem or create some given output. Um, but when you're creating a game, you want to make the user experience somewhat nicer, right? So it's it makes more sense to say something like here's players one instead of just printing out like heads heads tails and figure it out, figure out what that means. So yeah, this is something different than we've done. I haven't done a ton of stuff like this, so it's fun to go through it and, and work on a problem like this. Let's see if I change this to P1 and P2. Let's see if it just works. If I guess heads, 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 then, ooh, I got close, but I, I lost. It looks like Yep, the computer's guess of tails head head eventually won. Okay, that's kind of neat. Which, I mean, kind of makes sense because uh, it, it, it picked the right one, which is what we were like, you know. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yep. yep computer, computer is pretty likely to win if you put in all heads or all tails. So it's not a very good strategy. Uh, let's let's try something where we have some better odds. Heads, tail, heads. Ah, we actually won. Okay, cool. So it ended up being tails, tails, heads, tails, heads. Neat. Um, but we probably want to. Let's see. We probably want to have something after this that says like player one one or player two one, something like that, right? Mm hmm. Otherwise, it's like, uh, I'm looking at who won. <laughs> um, so trying to get that in there, um, I guess we'd need to do some sort of, well, OK, hold on. Something we know is that the winner, the last three is always going to be them, right? Like. Here, yes. player two one headsets tails. So, so it's we, the last. We don't need it. We don't need to necessarily test in line. We just need to wait till it ends and then look at you know, right? What what's here? Yeah. So maybe we just look at if the last three. Um, spring. Okay. Mm, would this work? Last three. Because we were looking at string take and okay, last and characters. Cool. So this would get the last three of the previous output, um, but the previous output is, oh, okay, here, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna store this result. I'm gonna store the result of the game as some other variable. Let's call it maybe result. And we of course wanna make that local in our module there. Okay, so we get that result. Then we print it out. Then we look at the last string results. So that was a little bit of a of a change up there, but basically I'm just storing our results so that we can reference it later instead of just printing it out. 
Okay, cool. If that is equal to player one, then we say player one, one. Otherwise, we say player two, one. And that's pretty straightforward, right? Maybe, well, actually, I was going to put print on around each of those, but since this if statement is just going to return one string, I can just print whatever the result of that is. And let's give it a shot. Ooh, that's a pretty long game. Oh, I see what's going on. OK, so our result here is a list of strings. I only want the last one, because the last one is when the game ended. Um, so luckily, there's a little function called last. And that should give us what we want, because now we're only looking at last game and player two said head sits tail so all right in this case it seemed to have worked cool i that's pretty much most of the game there um was there anything that i missed in the game definition there that you can think of zach um, oh well, let's see we need to show it and then we also need to come up with uh the if player one or two is first and we need to do that yeah yeah, I'd forgotten now, about that. Now, I, I was thinking of a way we could do something with this, and we could, like, separate this to make it more interactive. We can use a function called um, action menu. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not it. I thought I copied it. That's... You can look it up. It's action menu. Action menu. But basically, it's just a button that executes a function, but the oh. user presses it. So when you press it, it does it. Oh, whoa. Oh. Oh, and it does it over and over again. It doesn't delete the last one. Interesting. I oh, or at least for this is... one, because it's oh, because it's a I, function, right? So it, yeah. each time it runs the function, every time I press a button. Yes. That's so neat. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but this is a way. But we could, you know, start it, and it goes, okay, player, you, your computer goes first, and then the computer does it, and you see what the computer picked, and then um, we can, you know, select possible options uh starting ones that we want to do right okay. like heads tail heads 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 tails that type of stuff yes i can actually i was able to make a little pop-up menu that shows all possible that shows like uh lets you look at it let me i'll send this to you yeah yeah oh that's not it continue no so, <laughs> i'm sorry there you go you check that out OK, so this is what a pop-up menu might look like. Oh. So it, this is just the first option. This is making three tuples, or I'm sorry, every possible tuple mm -hmm. um, of heads and tails of three. And then it just string joins it, so it's readable. And this is, you know, these are the eight possible options of your of Penny's game with three bits. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so we could say like pick a. I don't. I wouldn't change that one. That would break it. That oh, actually. Really? That's the first. You have to. You have to give it the first option, in in pop up menu. So you have to give it the first option. I'm from what I understand, you can put this in an input field, and then it'll like you can have it be there. But Weird. I've only used this a couple times. So anyone in the okay, audience knows I was just what's going on. Yeah, I was thinking Work. since like here they name it print factorials. Is well, this is an action to... menu. This isn't a pop up menu. Oh, oh okay. Pop That's up. it's pop up menu. Okay. So Neat. we can, yeah. So you have this. You can have a dynamic, um, and that'll that'll save your variable. Like it'll rerun. It'll like rerun everything depending on the variable you pick. But I figure we probably don't want to do that. We probably want to have like. Uh, you know, a thing that, or some like delineation through the process where we're like, okay, um, you know, run this. Okay, now the computer's first. You pick yours. Okay, you pick yours. This is what you want. Press the button to play the game. Mm -hmm. And then you can press the button again and again and again and again if you want to play the game. Let me see here. Oh, cool. So if you so, change Val, it'll, it'll, now if you rerun that definition or that uh, cell, it should change it. Oh, uh, yeah. And if I say that it's dynamic, 
then it should change automatically. Yeah, so I change this to HTT, and then we get, oh, hey, now it's HTT. I change yeah. it to TTT, and it's cool. It now has that value. OK, neat. Um, so this could be how the player chooses, basically, right? Yes. Like, for example, instead of this, we could say this with P1. And then we'll, whoa. Oh, yeah, so, here, so here's the only thing is it's uh -huh. going, you need, if you set it to dynamic, it doesn't assign anything because you haven't, you know, used your menu yet. So right. you need to give it a definition to start. Which is part of the confusing part. I I am not entirely used to. This. I'm not, you know, an expert. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're learning. Yeah, no, this is new for everyone. I think we're uh, we're getting, we're just testing this. Yeah. Okay. So I was oh I was thinking that I'd get this pop up menu and that I could make my choice before the rest happens. But I guess if you want that, you would probably need the action menu, right? This is why I was thinking of the action menu where it's like, okay, if you want to do this, then you do that, then you do this, then you do that. Mm -hmm. It might be better to have like a notebook definition of this where we're not even using a module, but it's just like a total notebook thing. I guess oh, is right. how it works. I don't know how to explain it. We feel like the same as saving it to its own Python file and you just call that. You would just, run it and it would open a new notebook where you play the game? Maybe, or maybe that, or maybe even just like, uh, I don't know, just a definition, a rolling definition, a global definition of it yeah. would be the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I don't think maybe we'll get to that, but I dare someone in the audience to, to try to do that. <laughs> well, we're going to try to make something out of this, but at least yeah. we made the game that works, sort of. Right. Yeah, we had at least this part works up to, um, it doesn't choose at random who the first player is. Uh, so we still need to get that functionality in. Um, let's see, maybe we could just do, we would need to choose who goes first and then There's based also... off... Oh, I'm sorry. There's a new function that just came out. I guess this is with 12.3. It's experimental right now. Um, so it's it could it may work, but there may be some issues. It's called ask. Oh. Ask function. That's new to me. Yeah. I'm gonna oh nope. I just I copy that. It's ask function the one below. Oh, experimental. Watch out. So this I guess if we you can ask multiple things, I think oh. is what it's so if we ask for multiple things and it'll be like, oh, ask for a number, oh, oh, cool. ask for a one, which if we oh. if we try running this, I, I'm actually mm -hmm. very curious to see this. If we X type in X number. and then submit, will it go to the next one? Oh, and then why is I think this is the way to go. I think this is the way to do it. So could I then? Oh, it adds them together. OK. It'll do your function with it, which is we we have a function here that runs it. So if we have an ask in the front of it or an ask like out wrapping it that says, OK, what's P1, what's P2? OK. And it and we can even have it randomly assign P1 is first or P1 is second. And I can be like what's printed to them or to the user. Right. Um, so computer is first. Computer chose blank. Yeah, yeah. OK. So would we, I think we'd still have this whole module inside of the ask function. It's just that instead of this, we would have P1. We'll see. P... I, I think we may have to move it out of the module, which may be what oh. we need to do. But I don't know yet. Let's test it. Oh, I think we might be able to say P1 equals ask of um well, i guess we would say this and goes then you to have a string right? yeah let's see what happens whoa <gasps> oh it just it's an ask function okay well did we ask um <laughs> i think um i think we need to uh i think we need to put it in a uh move it out of module oh hold on oh There it is. Okay. I think oh. it, 
Yeah, I think it works. So basically what we saw before was I define the function. We need to actually call it later down like they did here. Um, and then you actually run the function. So if we did that all in line, we could just grow that there. And oh, this is cool. This oh, should work. very fun. Okay. So now like we just need to have something that, in, like, we now we just need to add the randomness of who's player one. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so it needs to say... Um, but the user choose. needs to know before right. they choose if they're player one or player two, or the computer or not. Maybe naming it P1, P2 is a bad option. Maybe it should be computer and human. But... Um, but it's fine. We've already gone this far with the variable definition, so we don't need to change it. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can have, oh, um, an ask function where the person goes first, and then we separately have an ask function where the computer went first. And if the computer went first, instead of saying enter your guess, it'll say something like, the computer chose this. Um, enter, enter your choice, your right? Yeah. So we, could, uh, we could also just have a random choice between like running one one game with the computer first and another game with the computer second. Yeah. I think we could, I think that random choice can work like that. I'm I'm not really sure. Yeah, I I so random choice picks a random element from a list. Um I think if we wanted to do like choosing between running this segment of code versus running another segment of code. I'm going to say that I want an if statement, um, but that might be, uh, you know, my non-Wolfram language skills speaking. But we could easily say if random choice of true, false, right? So this will randomly execute either one or two, for example. So, that kind of so, if, we, well, so if we... Paste like paste like a print statement for like you know mm -hmm. like I don't know just something like and then have like just something different there like maybe even a different statement entirely okay and every time we run it it'll just do something different yeah okay that that's what we want right okay yeah so the first option could be computer going first um. And that would look like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused by P1 and P2. So I think I'm going to change these to like in and computer maybe. Or just Hume. Mm -hmm. But in works. In whatever. <laughs> so. In, oh, uh, was that P2? I thought that you're right. was. Yeah, you're right. I should be doing this with like placement rules but I'm just cleaning up my code here because I didn't like how I had written it um okay this will help us understand it a little bit better later on hopefully and that works I wonder, how it has, I wonder if you can use keep going it's fine I'm just exploring something so I guess for the, for our random choice, we could just like we could we could just define this function one of them as computer first, mm -hmm. human first, and then just like we have a delayed assignment for both of them, and then we just call, you know, whatever. Oh, so having a random choice of evaluating two pieces two, of code. Yeah, two completely different functions. So we have our one. This is this top one is uh, human first, right? Yeah. Oh, so, and then just run. Uh, but then we'd have to rewrite all of. Well, we don't want to have to rewrite stuff, the right? whole. I mean, we wouldn't. I guess we could just compartmentalize it more. I. It would be a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. Your choice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I I think I'm gonna do the if statement and then we'll assign the variables inside of here. So the first one is exactly as we have it. We'll say that that's, or maybe we'll do that as the second one we work on the first. No, I can Okay. I mean, so, one or the other, you know? So, yeah. So either it's gonna do all this 
Make Ooh. sure you, you say, and when you're ask winning, make sure you say enter your guess of three, three oh, flips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, then in the second choice, the computer goes first. So we have computer being, well, this is pretty easy. It would just be a random string choice. Ran string join, random choice, heads, tails, and we'll get three of them, right? Yeah. Then, then we would say, can we print something now and then have an ask? We could just string join in the ask because it's just a string. So yeah. you could just enter your guess. The com enter your guess. The computer entered. You know whatever, and then just put a quotation and then yeah string join comp and then string join space after there you go perfect if we that run this probably work if we run I'm this we have we'll to have it, it inside does. the module here oh this uh, is getting ugly well i mean we won't we don't have we knew to that this would be a little bit longer code than what we've written in the past because we're writing out a whole game here um we're not just trying to solve okay computer cool computer enter heads to... well that was easy all right so well, let's let's cheat. We know the answer. So, if someone enters heads tail heads, then we want to enter tails. Eight. Heads, heads okay. tails. Okay. Okay. We submit that. You won. All right. What if we okay. run it again? Ah, then we're first. Oh. And I'm okay. actually I'm gonna make that explicit. So we'll say like you are first. New line. So it so it like goes with the format. Oh, computer oh, no. guess H thirty four. Oh <laughs> no. So, well, all right. What I did was actually bad, and this demonstrates why you want to verify the input. If you're um, a good player, if you're if you're a good player, you won't break the game. Because yeah. that's what players should do. So please follow the rules next time. Um, right. Thank you. Um, but basically the way our code's written now uh is says that if someone enters something other than three letters, all of them capital H T, um, it will basically be stuck in an infinite loop because it'll keep going through this while until it finds something and it never will probably. Yeah, it never ah, will. Ah, right? very, very good. So. Um, unfortunately, um, okay, I'm gonna look at ask a little bit because it seems like there's there's got to be some way to be like, oh, you put in the wrong thing. Mm. Yeah, that's... But that's... it doesn't seem like there is currently with that functionality. Yeah, it's got uh... options. Um... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like cool. there's any way to check, which is kind of unfortunate. Are you going to ask a pen? So we could, um, I mean, you could always just put an if statement. What you could do is, I mean, another if statement, which we, which may be not good, but you could always just put another if in like, that says like, if in is bad, break. Right. Right. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure if there's a break function in, in Wolfram as the way I understand it in like Python or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there is a break for sure. Um, like while while X, I don't know. That might be not right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could write while true, break. Right. Yeah, true. Oh, Something just break. breaks it. Oh, it's uh, not breaking. It's still it didn't break. running. <laughs> oh no. Oh well, okay. Oh, you gotta do a break. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So that's just a symbol there. Uh, doesn't okay, really so much, that's funny. okay. That's actually that makes our life a little easier. Then go go back to our function. Then mm -hmm. we don't even need to do this in the statement defining in or comp. We could just do it in right when we start playing the game. So mm -hmm. right before result, we could just say oh, if it's not head if like it contains something other than heads or tails right boom we get rid of it like oh, you say like you you put in a bad thing you did a bad thing 
Well, right. we could put it in our outside of our nest while loop. We could be like, if bad, right? If bad, do not start, do not go. Yeah. So, what are the things we're testing for? The length has to be three, right? Yeah. So, if string length of in is not equal to three, and we could or, add or what else? Uh, string contains string contains q. Oh, I know. What about we could do string count? We could count up all the H's, count up all the T's, and the number of H's and T's has to sum to three, right? Oh, that would make it, that would be smart. Uh so does that do what I think? String gives a count on the number of times. Oh, it's pattern. Just a count. Pattern. Yeah. You want to do patterns. You want to put it in a list form? Would this um So if you put it in a list, I think it's going to give you what you want. Oh, Ooh, okay, never mind then. You're right. There, there's Ooh. five H's and T's. Okay, cool. Three of them. Okay, I think that's exactly what I want. So this is counting up the number of H's or T's. Okay, so then that should be that. And then so that if that is true, it's going to run our code. And then if it's not true, mm -hmm. you broke the game. Sorry. Right. So if we, we have, did the bad we have a program thing, to restart. <laughs> print bad input. Try again. And then and we need to have break. a. Yeah, if I think if we do a break in a module, or I guess you does this need All to right. be in the nest while list? Let's try it. I bet we can break out of a module. See, I, I don't mean, know if we. I I don't know. I feel like if you put this, I think you have to put this if statement in the nest while list. Mm. Which what about just might. Abort? What if we just abort? <laughs> I guess that would work. Oh, I mean that that's actually probably better all around. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Just like you broke the game. We we're not doing it anymore. You've ruined yeah, it. Yeah, just be better next time. So if I enter something that's good, hopefully we don't get anything bad now. Yep, the game played. Okay. The computer won. If I enter something that's bad, ask like firm. Oh, okay, all right. Something that was not allowed. So bad input try again and then it did it run again oh there is there is something called um there is ask confirmed which is another variation of ask function <gasps> bad input try again oh my god it aborts and restarts what? i did not know it would do that oh my gosh that's cool okay all right so that must be something going on inside of ask function where it says if it aborts, try again. Try again. We also, there's also an ask function for ask confirm, oh, which okay. I guess you put inside your ask and you're like, oh, are you sure? That's not right. It's ask confirm right there. Okay, let's try ask confirm. Yeah. These are all, I guess these are all new. They're experimental yeah. with 12.3. That's um, pretty neat. So it's kind of interesting. These are all like new way. They're more verbose ways of, Asking for inputs. These are these could be really great. Oh, it came out ten. I'm sorry then. I'm it's experimental still. So it's I cool apologize. I, I got a word that was from ten because yeah. I'm, I'm bad. Wow, this uh, ten point four was still experimental. But it's pretty cool. Um yeah. hopefully you can use it for test making. Um if you're like trying to make tests, you can also make tests with Wolfram Alpha. So So I think we somehow actually wrote a good game here. Um Oh, it's not beautiful, obviously, but it's not like it's going to take a long time since all it's doing is generating a few random numbers and printing them out. So yes, we test that we can put in oh yeah random That's garbage, good. gives us some bad input. Try again. I don't know why there's so many <laughs> it just like throws it all out. It says it's very annoyed with you. Uh, which days are live coding? Diego asked. Um, well, usually it's Monday or Tuesday every week. Um. I think we're going to have to look, we're going to, I don't know, we might have to take a hiatus for the next two weeks um, because of. Right. Yeah, the Zach Wolfram and I will be mentors on. at the Wolfram Summer Camp, which is for high school students who want to learn and create a project with the Wolfram language. Um, so Zach and I will be, for the next few weeks, working exclusively with them. Um, and that's a pretty intense camp. So I, I don't think we'll have live coding for at least the first half of July. 
we'll see if we're able to pick it up after then hopefully we'll we'll do our best maybe we'll try to um we'll try to get something out maybe if it can't be if it can't be verbal or uh, a video maybe we can get something like written down maybe it's just something to explore but hopefully after i think july 18th so that's the, the our so I should say expect us back the week of july 19th yeah why so many bad outs that is yeah, a good trying question to figure it out. yeah I'm we don't really know why, why it's why it's printing up bad input over and over again um, um it's because the computer is very angry that you're not you're not inputting the correct values so please you know it's going to get more angry every time you put in a bad input it and gets print really more angry. of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wolfram's getting a little emotional with us right now. Okay, he's not happy that we're putting in the wrong thing. I wonder if maybe, what if I put this inside the abort statement? I don't know if that'll work. Oh, maybe. No, no it's it's not. Please, <laughs> it's gonna be very angry. Yeah, even angrier than it had been. Um, it could be because it is. <clears throat> it runs. It runs. It. I don't know. I actually wouldn't. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I don't like all the bad inputs there, but um, oh, there's a, there's like a temporary print, I think. Um, yeah, print temporary. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, try that. Let's try that. So we'll try print temporary. It's probably um, still gonna do it, but it'll go away when we do it correctly. No. And then if we enter something good. Okay, well. Nice, another done over Rosetta. So Oh jeez. Yeah, we've got um looks like about 175 left on Rosetta code. It's about um, half of what we started at. So one one test someone asked is uh if if we enter three like white spaces, right? Will it actually no, I can answer this. It won't it won't work because we have the second test that says, oh is its count of heads and tails not equal to three, Yeah. which will always fail if you enter three bad ones. If you enter A three times, if you enter what's it called, any other letter, a number, it's not going to get that string count of heads or tails three times. Right. Yeah. So pretty much future proofed. Yeah, this actually worked out decently well. Um, we're able to get it so that only uh, good inputs happen and otherwise it gives us a bad input. I don't like why it's printing so many of them, um, but man, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure why it is happening, honestly. So we might figure that out. We might not, um, but if, maybe we'll maybe we'll make that what we, uh, we'll, we'll make a refinement of this into maybe mm -hmm. a manipulator or something to print as something to do if we have time during the summer camp. We can make it. And, We'll put it up somewhere for people to look at. Yeah, but thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, I, th I know I had a lot of fun again. Um, this last month or so has been really productive, and I hope to eventually see you on the live stream again, maybe closer to the end of July. Yeah, thank you guys for all of your positive uh, feedback and your help with the code and just helping me, someone that hasn't used Wolfram language really seriously until the beginning of 2021, you know, thank you for all your help and thanks for listening.